Hello there everyone and welcome to the channel. For today's episode, we will be talking about the impressive watch collection of the late Dame Elizabeth Taylor, who is a well-known Hollywood screen legend, a business tycoon, a collector of all things luxury, and most importantly a philanthropist. She's also famous for having one of the largest and most impressive jewelry collection by an individual, and her possession was even dubbed as the crown jewels of Hollywood. She passed away in 2011 and on that same year, her collection of baubles was auctioned off by Christie's with proceeds likely benefited her AIDS Foundation and MFAR. Alongside her jewels, she also managed to acquire some of the most impressive watches which is the subject for this episode, but before we proceed, please make sure to click the subscribe button to stay updated with the channel's future episodes. This Bulgari Serpenti Toboga's watch is crafted in 18 karat pink gold, with black opaline dial and diamonds on its bezel. This timepiece was a very special present because this came from Paolo Bulgari himself, who is a jewelry designer and grandson of the brand's founder, as Elizabeth and the Italian luxury house had a very great relationship throughout the years. It is well known that some of her most exceptional jewelry pieces came from Bulgari, and it famously started when she and her then-husband Richard Burton would go to Bulgari while they were in Rome Italy filming for their movie Cleopatra, so this act of gratitude from the brand to her came as no surprise. This Serpenti watch even had an inscription that states, To Dame Elizabeth, with gratitude, Paolo Bulgari, 2010. The watch went on to be sold at the auction of her belongings in 2011 for $62,500. This Cartier Art Deco watch was made in 1925 and it features diamonds around this tunnel-shaped silver case, with black onyx and rose-cut diamond links mounted in platinum and gold, on the black silk strap. Although the strap exhibits some visible wares, this Cartier watch is a great piece because this goes well with some of Elizabeth's Art Deco-inspired jewelry pieces, which is a popular design style in the 1920s and 30s that is characterized by its sleek geometric and stylized forms, in which she truly adored and managed to collect a lot of it. This watch was eventually sold for $80,500. She also managed to get her hands on a Patek Philippe Nautilus watch that is made in 18 karat gold and features a black dial and diamond hour markers, and a double row of diamonds on its bezel. Elizabeth also spent an ample amount of time in Switzerland where she was able to maintain a residence, and her love for the place led her to develop a liking to some of the world's most famous Swiss watchmakers, including Patek Philippe. Her watch is a Nautilus, an iconic design of the brand that has become a wildly popular collector's item, most especially in the recent years. Elizabeth's Patek watch was eventually sold for $47,500. This watch exhibits the quintessential house codes of Versace, with the presence of its sculptured iconic Medusa motif as its bracelet. It is rather less frequent that we encounter an item from this Italian luxury brand to be crafted in solid 18 karat gold, since it is quite a common knowledge that the metallic products that they produce especially on the recent years are gold-plated, so to find out that this Versace timepiece being made in solid gold is truly exceptional. On top of its precious metal attributions, this watch also features a Swiss quartz movement, and diamonds as our markers and its bezel. This Versace timepiece went on to be sold for $23,750. Going back to Bulgari and she also owned this gold and diamond parentesi wristwatch, which is crafted in 18 karat gold with diamond embellishments on the bracelet. This watch also features a gold dial and hour markers represented by letters. The Bulgari parentesi range was introduced in 1982 and features a distinct motif of brackets or parenthesis that is also reminiscent to Rome's eternal city pavements, the travertine junctions used to link the stone blocks. 
This design was also the brand's first foray into modular jewelry, that caters to the lifestyle of women in the business sector, that needed jewels that can be worn from morning until night. This watch of Elizabeth also featured an inscription that states, 51487, I love you. This Bulgari watch was sold for $37,500. This magnificent watch by Fred, features a Paveset diamond dial, a Paveset diamond bezel and on the bracelet, as well as some caliber cut sapphires that created an almost identical geometric design all over. It also features a quartz movement and the entire timepiece is crafted in 18 karat white gold. Fred is a French brand that specializes on jewelry and timepieces that was founded in 1936. This wristwatch was eventually got sold for $110,500. Dame Elizabeth also owned this wristwatch by Chanel called the Mademoiselle, which features a quartz movement, a five-strand cultured pearl bracelet, and an 18-karat gold bezel and clasp. It also has a square-shaped white dial with black Roman numerals. This Mademoiselle wristwatch exhibits Chanel house codes that is known for pearls and its white and gold color combination, aside from its truly unique design as pearl embellished wristwatches are pretty rare in the watch market. This went on to be sold for $43,750. This diamond and gold wristwatch by Piaget is a manual winding one, with Paveset diamond dial, and flanked with round, cut diamonds on the bezel. It is made in 18 karat yellow gold with bracelets that were designed like a double row rope chain. Piaget is among the most well-known luxury watch brands in the world that was founded in 1874 by Georges Piaget, and the brand started off as a movement manufacturer for established watch brands, until they eventually focused on producing their own watches in the following years. This gold Piaget watch of Elizabeth got sold for $56,250. Another watch in Elizabeth Taylor's possession is this Instrumento Numero Uno wristwatch by the brand de Grisagono. Instrumento Numero Uno is translated as number one instrument, is embellished with white diamonds on its square-shaped dial, and paveset black diamonds that adorn the bezel and the case. This 18-karat black gold and metal timepiece also comes with a beige galliahat strap or sharkskin leather that adds an interesting contrast with the face. This extraordinary timepiece went on to be sold for $68,500. Elizabeth Taylor also owned this unique timepiece from Milner. This watch features two octagonal faces with one in tiger's eye dial and the other one in malachite, with both faces being adorned with round-cut diamonds on their bezel. It is made more exciting for its textured 18 karat gold bracelet that it can be mistaken as a thick bejeweled handcuff. This Milner piece is pretty rare and was sold for $134,500. She also owned this wristwatch from Cartier that is made of 18 karat yellow gold and is adorned with round cut diamonds on the bracelet and two baguette cut diamonds on the bezel. It also features a white dial with blued steel hands, which added a little bit of character to this tiny timepiece. This Cartier watch went on to be sold for $37,500. She also owned this unique multi-gem wristwatch from Boucheron that is comprised of diamonds, pink sapphires, rock crystals, and rose quartz, all mounted in 18 karat gold. This timepiece has a quartz movement with paveset diamond dials, baguette cut diamonds and pink sapphires on the bezel, while the straps are crafted with rock crystal and rose quartz beads, to form a two-row bracelet. This went on to be sold for $50,000.
Another piece from her collection is this gold and hardstone watch from Piaget. This features a manual winding mechanism, with an oval-shaped dial made from green hardstone, and is set in a textured 18-karat yellow gold bezel, in combination with its bracelet that is designed to exhibit a wide openwork band of overlapping gold hoops. This Piaget timepiece went under the hammer in 2011 and was sold for $80,500. Dame Elizabeth also had a Frank Mueller wristwatch in her collection. This timepiece features a quartz movement, with tunnel-shaped dial with black Arabic numeral hour markers and blued steel hands. Its bezel is flanked with round, cut diamonds, and its entire bracelet links also encrusted with sparkly diamonds. This watch is crafted in 18-karat rose gold and was eventually sold for $60,000. This next one is the truly magnificent timepiece called the Lord Kala Bracelet Watch from Vacheron Constantin. The masterpiece was made in 1989 and is fully encrusted in rectangular cut diamonds set in 18 karat yellow gold from the dial to the bezel, down to its straps, that it can be easily mistaken as a bejeweled bracelet. This watch is arguably one of the most famous gifts Elizabeth received from her dear friend, the late king of pop Michael Jackson. The Vacheron Constantin Lord Kala watch was eventually got sold for a whopping $362,500. And of course we can't miss discussing this snake gold and platinum high jewelry timepiece from Bulgari, that was first seen by the world wrapping around the wrist of Elizabeth Taylor, during her stay in Rome for the filming of Cleopatra. This watch boasts an 18-karat gold spring band as the body, with marquees and round-cut diamonds on platinum on the tip of the tail. The serpent's head is also encrusted with diamonds in marquees, round and pear shapes, and emeralds for the eyes all mounted in platinum, and its mouth opens up to reveal a watch that features a mechanism that was produced by Jager Lekel Tra. This watch ended up to be sold for an astonishing $974,500. And these were some of Dame Elizabeth Taylor's impressive timepiece collection. It is just truly amazing that she amassed a huge collection of magnificent and a few one-of-a-kind timepieces, on top of her larger-than-life jewelry collection during her lifetime, which is a reflection of her exquisite taste for art and luxury. Let me know which of these timepieces you liked the most by leaving a comment down below. Please don't forget to click the thumbs up button if you like this video, and please subscribe to this channel as well. And until next time, bye bye.